Amen. Someone prayed that miracles would break out today, and I've got half an hour, 33 minutes, so praying that a miracle happens that I finish in half an hour. So come on, Lord. Amen. Hey, today I want to, I was going to, should I sit down? I'm a bit manic, but I feel like, and I'm on, I've been having decaf coffee for two weeks. It's weird. No, I'm going to sit down, it's dumb. Um, no wonder I've got so much energy because I'm not, my body's not working so hard to burn off all the uh, caffeine, so it's good. Hey, uh, today's uh, message is called Making Space for God. Making Space for God. You know what? Uh, I don't know about you, but life can feel full sometimes. I like that. I don't know where I heard it from, but they talked about when people, uh, there was, I think it was Chris Valentin said, you know, he doesn't say that he's busy. He says that his life is full. Uh, uh, Pete Scazzaro uh, is another uh, author and he says, I, he doesn't say he's busy, he says he's limited. And I'm like, yeah, they're better words because busyness can seem like, oh, it's all hyper. It's like, no, it's just full. My week is full and I am limited. Um, and we can all live in that space. Bless you if you've got more time in your week just to, you know, sit around staring at a wall. It's awesome. It's, it's great. If you could train our kids to do that, they'd, they'd love that because they're, you're always bored, aren't you, Micah? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it, there's constant distractions. You know, we live hyper-connected. Constantly, we've got this little device that can be in our hand or in our pocket that's where people have access to us at all times and we can be consumed by that. We can live with high demands upon our time, upon our energy. So it can be hard to make space for God in our lives, especially when God is not demanding time from us. God, God commands us to give Him our lives, but He doesn't demand it. And there's a slight nuanced difference there. God's like, I'm calling you to do this. I desire that you would do this. But if you don't, I'm not going to come and kind of knock you over the head or jump in your face and scream loudly. But the world will. Social media will, you know, our phones will, our TVs will, our jobs will. There's so much in our life that can be putting a demand upon us that if we're not intentional about making space, then oftentimes our weeks end up filling up and God doesn't have that space in our lives. And I think we all desire more interaction with God. Who here desires more interaction with God in their daily life? Absolutely. Absolutely. We all want more. We all want to know Him more. And we know that God gives His fullness to us, but we want to experience Him in our daily lives and to know that we can do that. But sometimes our habits and our rhythms of life don't prioritize God. They don't leave space for Him and they don't allow His plans and purposes to be fulfilled through us. And the thing is, when we give our lives to Jesus, that's what we say. When you become a Christian, you give your life to Jesus. You've heard, yeah, that's what we say. Yes, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 13, or I gave my life to Jesus at this time. So when we give our lives to Jesus, we give our lives to Jesus. So our life is no longer our own, it belongs to Him. So interestingly, if we're going apart our life, not consulting him about what would you want to do, how would you want to live, who are you in me and through me, then maybe we haven't grasped the fullness of what it means to give our lives to Jesus. Because we've kind of kept back, well, I'll give, I'll give a bit of time on a Sunday, maybe once a fortnight. I'll give a bit of time when I pray in the morning. I'll give a bit of time when I, when I say goodnight to you, whatever it might be. But it really, it's our whole life has been given to him. He has purchased our entire life. So what we have is we desire more engagement with God. We say, yeah, I want more of God. God desires more engagement with us. So we've got this relationship going on between us and God, and we're both wanting the same thing. Has God left any barriers between you and Him? Can anything separate you from the love of God that's in Christ? No, the Bible's very clear. 
height, depth, where nothing, no angels, demons, nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ. The throne room Hebrews speaks of, that the, the entrance to the throne room is always open for us. We can come boldly before the throne of grace, that we might receive grace and mercy in our time of need. So God is always open and accessible to us. There is nothing standing in the way of us connecting with God. So what is the one thing that can stand in the way of us connecting more deeply with God? Us. But we need to think of that positively. Not thinking, oh God, he must be cross because I didn't give him enough of my time. He must be frustrated at me and he must be mad at me. and I've I've got to do more and and I spent 10 minutes, but I'm not sure if that was enough. So but then I spent half an hour. I'm just not sure that was enough. And I'm not sure if I'm satisfying the quota of demand that God puts on my life. Anyone ever felt that way? Anyone ever felt condemned that they haven't spent enough time with God in a day or in a week? Yeah. I don't believe that's God. I don't believe that's the Holy Spirit. Because I believe God is constantly desiring more of us and we're desiring more of Him. So to take those two positives and meet them together to say, well, Lord, if you're wanting more of me and I'm wanting more of you, then I need to create space that those two desires can meet and that's what I want to share with you today so there is no barrier and yet God brings an invitation to us he speaks uh, of this Jesus does in Luke 11 9 to 13 and he says I tell you ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds and the one who knocks it will be opened and then he reveals what kind of what the father is like what father among you if his son asks for a fish will instead give him a serpent or if he asks for an egg will give him a scorpion if you then who are evil know how to good give give good gifts to your children how much more will the heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him so he's like even in the natural you know, like if you're a parent or even a friend, like you know what it is to, to give good things to people. And when they ask, you're like, yeah, I don't wanna, I'm not going to trick you in that way. I'm going to give you a good thing. And the Father who is perfect and holy and loving and gracious and kind and good, when we ask for more of Him, He's like, yes. But there takes an asking. It takes a seeking. It takes a knocking on our behalf in order for that to be established. I love when I discover answers where I'm in the position that I can alter the outcome. What's really hard sometimes is when you get an answer to a problem, but you can't do anything about it. But what God is saying here is like, no, no, you get to determine the outcome. The door is open, I'm available, I'm ready for you, but you can do some things that will actually enable that to happen. So God's process for engagement with us requires action from us. God is available, but we don't always avail ourselves of Him. If we're not purposeful in pursuing Him by making space in our lives for Him, then we'll continue to find that interaction lacking. This is, I find this really hard. I find it hard to stop, to engage, to think. Now, I feel like my whole life is just a yes to God. And I'm here, I'm doing what I'm doing. I I, I wake up every day, I'm just like, I've just given my yes to God. So wherever we do, my life is yours, Jesus. But what I want is that ongoing, in the moment interaction with God, feeling His presence, knowing His closeness, hearing His voice and being able to respond to that. And that's what takes intentionality. But again, life is full and you're busy and you can be busy doing good things. It's not like, oh, my life's busy just pursuing selfish pursuits. Like my life is busy doing good stuff. Like being a dad is, is good. Being, being a pastor, being a leader, you know, serving people, that's all good things. But sometimes even good things can get in the way of our God interactions. So again, it's not just about setting apart time, making space for God that we might receive from Him. And this again can be what we, you know, we'll often use that language of just in, in, the, in the secret place or in a quiet place or in your prayer closet. And, and oftentimes in those places, we position ourselves to receive from God. 
And that's really good because God wants to pour out into our lives. He wants to speak to us. He wants to shape who we are. But it's also about creating space for us to hear what he has for us to do. So it's not just about receiving from God. It's also about living for God. So we spend time with God for intimacy, but also for instruction. God wants to show us his goodness, but he also wants to transform us into his likeness. And he wants us to express his nature to the world around us. He wants to pour into us. He wants to transform us, but he wants to live through us. You know, and if we look at the Trinity, we can see kind of three relational dynamics at work. So the Godhead or the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's one God in three persons, three expressions of who he is. And as we make space for each aspect of God's personhood, we get to experience and live in the fullness of who he is and who we are in him. But it's important that we learn to relate to all of who God is, not just one expression of who he is. So we might really find it easy to connect with Father God. Yeah, I love Father God and he, he tells me who I am. He shapes my identity. He provides for me. He protects me. He does all of the things that a good father does. He's perfect in all his ways. <laughs> But if I'm only engaging with Father God, I'm, I'm receiving identity, I'm receiving engagement, but I'm not necessarily receiving my instruction to go out and live in the world. I'm not necessarily engaging with the fullness of His presence. So I want to encourage you this morning that as we make space for God, we make space for each part and expression of who God is. So it's about making space for Father God. Making space for Father God. So we need to make space to be with Him. Now we know the Holy Spirit is with us. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. He is always with us. But to set apart time just to be with the Father. To listen, to learn, to experience, or just to do absolutely nothing. You could go for a walk with Father God. You don't have to be saying lots of prayers. You don't have to be thinking of lots of stuff. You can just be quiet and be still and know that he is God. Sometimes I need to just be still and know that he is God. And when I know that he is God, I discover that I am not. You can be still. That was a lesson for me to learn. It's like, I can just say nothing. You know, I, when I'm driving with my kids in the car and we're going somewhere and it just depends on the time, but usually if it's like just me and one of my kids and sometimes it's like talk, 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 all the way there. That's great. Other times it's just sit in silence. But when it's silent, I'm just as much their father and they are just as much in my presence as when there's constant conversation. We're just enjoying each other's presence. We're just being with one another and we can do that with God. So it's about making space to be with Him. The other one is to make space to discover who we are in Him. So understanding in that place, as I said before, you know, you realize, well, I'm not God because I'm acknowledging you are God, but also who do you say that I am? The Father is the one who determines our identity. And so in that place, we can acknowledge, and it can be from through reading scripture or just memorizing stuff, listening to worship. In that place, we're letting God write truth upon our hearts as to who we are. So as we make space for Father God, we make space to discover who we are in Him. And as we make space for Father God, we make space to respond to Him in love or in love to Him. That's what I wrote, I think. It doesn't matter. There we go. But we make space to respond to him in love. That can be in, in worship. That can just be in thankfulness and gratitude. But we respond. We let love be stirred up in our hearts. And we acknowledge, God, you are so good. And you are so gracious. And you are so kind. And that, again, reinforces the bond that our heart has towards him. And when we're learning who he is and who we are in him, then when we hit times of trouble... 
God doesn't become the enemy to us in that time but because we know who he is. Oftentimes, then I see people and they, they come to hardships in their life and God gets the blame for things. Whereas for me, I'm like, I'm, I'm hopeful that I'm at a place in my relationship with God, in my knowing of who he is, that regardless of what happens in my life, he will always be good. Because he has proven himself to be that, but I've rested long enough in his goodness to say, Lord, I I know bad things might happen in my life, but I know in the midst of that, you are still good and you are still good towards me and you owe me nothing and yet you have given me everything. So we need to make space for Father God and it's also about making space for Jesus. So we can make space to learn from him. When you read the Bible, especially the gospels are great, and you just read about who Jesus is, we get to learn who he is. What was he like? I know I haven't seen much of The Chosen, but a lot of people love The Chosen, that kind of movie-free TV series. And look, there is, there's, a, there's a biblical framework to it. Some stuff is just kind of storyline added. The point isn't to be a theological kind of documentary. But what I hear people experiencing is the humanity of Jesus. He's fully human and fully divine. But the humanity, like, oh yeah, I wonder what it would have been like to sit with him and to receive from him and to hear his words. And there's everything that's written in the Bible, but there would have been a whole lot of conversation talking about, hey, what do you fellas want to have for dinner tonight? You know, like, oh, I stubbed my toe on a rock and I'm sure he didn't blaspheme, but, you know, like he's just, like there there is so much more of life with him. And so to, and all we've got is the account of the Gospels um, and, and obviously letters about him, but we can learn what was he like. And when we learn what, what he was like, we learn who he desires us to be. That is the goal of discipleship is to become like Jesus. But we've got to learn him before we can learn who he desires us to be. So we make space to learn from him and we make space to live for him. So again, when Jesus gives us instruction, we learn there's actually things that he desires us to do. He calls us to obey He calls us to live in a particular way, in a different way, in a new way, in his way. But we need to make space to actually live for him. If our life is consumed only doing our own thing and we're not leaving space to live for him, then again, we're going to be limited in fulfilling all the good things that God has for us and for the world. So we make space to live for him and we make space to love others with him. You might need to set apart time in your diary. You might need to be prepared that you're not rushing from place to place, that when God presents an opportunity for you to love someone with him, that you're prepared and willing to do that. You're prepared and willing to stop and have a conversation. You're prepared and willing to stop and to to pray and to love on someone. You're prepared and willing to, to connect and to go deeper, to serve, to love, whatever it might be. But when we make space for God, it's not just in a quiet time. It's actually, it's in my driving time and in my shopping time and in my working time. In every moment I'm prepared, you might have something for me to do and I'm going to leave space for you, Jesus. You know, we've got uh, our kind of beats discipleship framework. It's about, so if you've not heard anything of that, you can look it up on YouTube. We've got cards up the back there as well. But it's all about um, setting apart five rhythms, B-E-A-T-S, which is bless, eat, abide, train, and send. Okay? It's a framework for you to live as a missionary where you set apart time or you choose to bless someone or a group of people in your week. You set apart time to eat with people because as we share food and meal, there's deep connection that happens. It could be that you eat with a work colleague at a lunchtime, but you're intentional about doing that. You invite a neighbor over for a meal. The A stands for abide. So we spend time abiding with Holy Spirit, which we'll get to that, making space for him. The T is train, training in learning Jesus. 
which is, the, again, the point that I'm making here. We're learning who he was and how he lived and how he therefore wants us to live. And the S is understanding that we are sent. We've all been sent by Jesus out into the world to make disciples and to see his kingdom come. So I really encourage you, get onto the beat stuff. It's real simple. It's all outlined for you. Amen. And you can fill your time listening to sermons about that on YouTube. So finally, we need to make space for Holy Spirit. It's about making space to learn His presence. God is real. God is present. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit has made His home in us if we are a born-again Christian. You have become a temple of the Holy Spirit, a dwelling place for God. That is phenomenal. That is radical. That is mind-blowing. Okay, But it is true. Do you feel it? Maybe not all the time. Maybe some of you do. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You might never feel it. But maybe for some of us, we don't feel it because we don't make time to feel it. We don't make time to experience it. We don't give ourselves over. Sometimes making space is actually making space in, in our personality for Him to move. That's all, I could never get up and dance. That's just not who I am. Cool. What if Holy Spirit wants you to dance? Bum, bum. Yeah. You're stuck there. Because now I can say, well, my personality excuses me from being obedient to God. Oh, bonus, loophole. No, it doesn't. I'm not saying everyone has to get up and dance, but I'm just saying it's like we need to make space sometimes, even in who we are, to say, I'm willing to do whatever you desire me to do. I, I can never go up and talk to a stranger in public at the shopping center. Well, you could if he tells you to. It means he'll give you the grace to do it. But you know what? Sometimes we've just we've we've closed down that space. It's so like I could never do that. You know, if you had asked me 20 years ago, could you stand up in front of a large group of people regularly and speak somewhat coherently for half an hour to an hour? You know, could you, I'd be like, absolutely not. I don't, I don't recall doing a single oral presentation at school because I must have been sick on the, all of those days or something, you know. Oh, tummy ache all of a sudden. But like that was just not, I couldn't hold a conversation with, with people barely. Uh, and, and yet here I am. And I got here not because I somehow became good at doing something. It's because I just said yes. That's all it is. That would petrify me to do that. I'm an introvert. I, I, would, I would be scared to go up and talk to a stranger at the shopping center. But I would trust if Holy Spirit says to do it, well, then you're going to provide what I need, Lord. But I've got to make space. I'm not going to make excuses I, I can make excuses all day long, but what I'd rather do is make space for God to move. So make space to learn what it feels like. What does it feel like when Holy Spirit's wanting me to do something? And I get weird stuff. I'm standing here, sitting here during the morning prayer time before this, and I get up and I stand, and my right leg shakes. And that's just, I just, that's just a sign to me that the Holy Spirit is manifestly present around me. Doesn't mean everyone's right leg shakes. That's what happens to me. If I'm praying for someone and sometimes my stomach muscles will tighten up, okay? So that's why it's good prayer, good, you know, core workout. Um, <laughs> but I'll feel that. And I know that's a, 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 like a breakthrough anointing has come upon me. So it means God's wanting, Holy Spirit's wanting me to pray for breakthrough. Does that happen to everyone? No. But I've just learned Holy Spirit, how he speaks to me, even physically in my body. Sometimes you'll feel weight. Sometimes you'll feel electricity or shivers or something like that. I'll be sitting in a conversation and someone will say something and I'll just get shivers from the top of my head all through my body. I'm like, and that's for me is a confirmation that yes, what they've said, God is in agreement with that and he's just brought us into agreement. But again, it's different for everybody, but you've got to set apart space to learn him, to learn how does he talk to me? How does he interact with me? Because he does and he will, but you also need to make space. But again, I know different people, some people are like have crazy supernatural encounters and some people just don't in the same way. And that's okay because it's your relationship with him. 
So make space to learn his presence, make space to be led by him, which I've kind of already covered, and make space to walk in his power. Again, that means being, being available for God to use you to demonstrate his power. That might be through prophecy, through words of knowledge, through praying for healing, signs, wonders, miracles, whatever it is. It's like, I, I'm, I wanna make space for you, God, that you could use me in that way. So making space means setting apart time each day for him. Making space means being okay with leaving free space and time for him to lead you and to change your plans to match his plans. Making space means making God your highest priority each day. And the reward is more of him in your life, more peace as you rest in him, more of a sense of his presence amongst you, more purpose as you're led by him where you get to the end of the day and you go, man, me and Jesus accomplished so much today. And more fruitfulness as he pours out his love and fulfills his plans in and through you. That's the reward that God wants to give you. And what he's asking is like, hey, would you give me your time? Would you give me your attention? Would you give me your affection? And would you let me use you to do amazing, wondrous things on the earth? Amen? Amen. Awesome. Let's pray. If you are able to stand, I'd love to invite you to do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are present amongst us. We thank you, Father, that you are desiring time with us, Lord. That we don't need to beg you to meet with us, Lord, that you are always waiting, your door is always open. And we thank you, Father, that you are not scolding us because we haven't spent enough time, Lord. But you're just waiting and desiring and longing. You're jealous for us, Lord. So Father, as our desires match your desires, Lord, would you help us, Holy Spirit? Would you help us to set apart and make space for you. And we can do it in our own way, Lord, and we wanna be led by you, but we pray, Holy Spirit, just for grace upon us, Lord. Maybe for some of us, we find it so easy to be with you, but maybe we're not so great at then going and living for you, that we love our secret place and we engage with you in the secret place, but maybe we don't engage with you in the marketplace, Lord. But you are wanting to use us, be present with us in every moment, Lord. In every moment. So I pray, Holy Spirit, you would help us to reorient our time around you. That we would make space for you in our days. And again, not just in a moment that we'd set aside, but in every moment, Lord, as we learn your presence, then we get to know your presence in every moment. That we're listening for your voice to be speaking to us. And again, the promise is that your sheep will hear your voice and we're your sheep, Lord. So we thank you that you speak. We thank you that you give us the ability to hear. we make space for you, Lord. We make room for you. We make room for you in our heart. We make room that you would conform us to your likeness. And we make room that you would use us to fulfill your plans and purposes in the world. We say, come Holy Spirit, come and move. 
You know, maybe you've never experienced the Holy Spirit. I just want to encourage you, if you, if you feel bold enough, just to stick your hands out, just to put them out in front of you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, we ask for a witness right now. We ask for a, a tangible experience, Lord. And Lord, we love that we can know about you in our minds and, and believe in our hearts. But even as the Apostle Paul came to the Corinthian church and he said that he would demonstrated the power of the Holy Spirit, that their faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, in your presence, Holy Spirit. So we pray, Holy Spirit, come. We don't need to be feel bad about wanting an experience of you. You desire to give it, Lord. On the day of Pentecost, everyone saw it and everyone experienced it, Lord. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are alive and well and active on the earth today. And we say, I just say, Holy Spirit, come. We agree, yes, Lord, I receive you, Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would just give a witness, maybe electricity, maybe heat in people's bodies, maybe tingling in their fingers, Lord, weight upon them, Lord, shaking, tongues would break out. We just say, yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Whatever you wanna do, we make space for you. Just say, I make space for you, Holy Spirit. I make space for you, Holy Spirit. I make space for you, Holy Spirit, to baptize me in your presence. I make space for you, Holy Spirit, if you desire to give me a, a prayer language, I make space for you, Holy Spirit. But I make space even with my mouth to begin to speak out what you're putting on my mind and in my heart. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Father, we make space, even maybe from our history, Lord, with you. Maybe there's been lack. Maybe there's been longing and unanswered prayers. But Lord, we continue to make space that you might answer those prayers, that you might meet our desires, Holy Spirit. You're a good Father. You're a good Son. You're a good Spirit. We trust you and we love you, Lord. And as we go out into this week, I just pray a joyful anticipation of encounters with you this week, Lord. Not a dread, not a weighty expectation or demand because you don't put that upon us, Lord. But a joyful anticipation of encounter with you. We love you, God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Bless you, family. Please remember... Sign up for all of the things to sign up. If you have an, uh, any desire in you to serve in youth or kids, please see either Mitch or Sam or head up to the info desk. We've got stuff about Kingdom Life if you need more questions. Uh, if you're needing prayer, if you'd love more prayer, we would love to pray for you and bless you. We've got our ministry team here. So just come forward, fill up this space and, uh, and we'd love to do that with you. Bless you guys. Have a great week.